Fallout is well known for taking a real world location and altering it and it's one of the drawing factors of the series is going into one of these games and finding the location whether it be Boston for Fallout 4, Washington DC for Fallout 3, Las Vegas for New Vegas or in this case Los Angeles for Fallout 1 and seeing how the game interprets these areas after they have been nuked obviously they exist in an alternate future before they get nuked and we get to see how they want to make them appear how they want to display them to the player and there's a lot of artwork around this there's a lot of storytelling through the way that they show them and it's one of the most fascinating parts of this series given the recent release of the fallout television show this had me wanting to cover the city of los angeles given it is present and central to the show and seemingly receives power by the end of the series. Now, unlike the city of Las Vegas, which would become New Vegas and remain its identity after the war, Los Angeles would not. Los Angeles would be referred to as the Boneyard or Angel's Boneyard after the war in 2077. I'd like to start off before we get into further details, drawing a bit of a picture giving people an idea of what the Boneyard is like in comparison to how other Fallout games depict cities because it is quite different. So in a game like Fallout 4 where we have Boston, we're obviously drawing from things about the real world Boston. That's what Bethesda does in that game. You obviously have Diamond City which is based off of the real life Fenway Park. They're using some of the culture of that city from the pre-war and putting it into the apocalypse. New Vegas even further is a shining example of this as obviously Las Vegas before the war is a den of gambling, prostitution, whatever your heart desires, you know, feed into vices. That's why it's referred to as Vice City very often. New Vegas sticks right along with those themes in a post-apocalyptic version of that city. The original Fallout title, whether that was their intention or not, doesn't actually really do that with Los Angeles. And perhaps that was the intention, given that it is referred to as the Boneyard. From what you can see of Los Angeles in the original Fallout game, it is a landscape of steel skeletons of the skyscrapers that remain. Very few buildings are still in any sort of usable state. And as we can see in the Fallout television show, this place was nuked to hell. It was bombed. It's quite unclear, and there's not an exact answer on this, I don't believe, but it's possible that in the Fallout timeline, Los Angeles was the largest city in the United States, even bigger than New York City. Point being, this enormous metropolitan area is ravaged by the bombs and altered into something so decrepit and foreign to its former glory that it can only be recognized as the Boneyard, whereas a city like Vegas largely maintains its identity and thus its name. Now, like many areas in Fallout, the city would be largely repopulated by survivors who emerged from a vault. However, the vault that repopulates Los Angeles would not be numbered like most of the ones we come into contact with in the Fallout games. 
You see, within some neighborhoods in the real world, we have these things called model homes, which are used to tour by those looking to purchase a home within a plan. It gives them a general idea and is used to sell houses by the realtors. That is what the Los Angeles vault was for vaults being marketed by Vault Tech. It was a demonstration vault. Despite being created only for demonstration, it still appeared to be fully functional as those who were lucky enough to make it into the vault before the bombs dropped were able to survive. In just 15 years after the Great War, where the bombs were dropped, these vault dwellers would emerge from the Los Angeles demonstration vault into the boneyard in 2092. Just for some perspective, this is 10 years earlier than Vault 76 was opened in the events of Fallout 76, which takes place in 2102. Vault dwellers would emerge because the vault's surface radiation sensors detected the above area was sufficiently clear. So, to think about this a little further, these vault dwellers were only in there, as I said, for 15 years, meaning they were the same people who went in. They're the ones that are now coming out to repopulate Los Angeles, just like the sole survivor in Fallout 4 goes into the cryo chambers to sleep and then wake up as he existed in the pre-war and now the post-war. It's the same thing for these vault dwellers who went in in the Los Angeles demonstration vault. These guys had all the perspectives and ideas of people who existed before the bombs dropped and they're coming up to repopulate Los Angeles, which is very different to think about. It's often in Fallout that we see people locked away for 100, 200 years and then they come out to see what's going on up top and they have very different ideas of what the world outside is like because they've never experienced it. They lived in a vault their whole life. When we get the chance to explore Los Angeles in the first Fallout game, we get to see a couple of different areas. Adidam is one of them, which is now the Boneyard's inner city. We have the downtown, which the Blades control from the nightclub. We have the library, where the followers of the apocalypse are first met. There's a warehouse full of death claws, a factory, which is now called the fortress, that the gunrunners have taken over and surrounded by a mode of toxic waste. And then finally, the cathedral, which is directly above the demonstration vault. We'll begin with the town of Adidam. The town of Adidam is named after a term that refers to a sanctuary within an ancient temple only open to priests. That's via Merriam-Webster. It's very fitting for Fallout to name things in an almost ironic fashion, as in this case, Adidam is referred to as the sanctuary, and then the remnants of Los Angeles are the ancient temple that that sanctuary sits within. Originally, the vault dwellers who emerged from the Los Angeles demonstration vault under the leader of their mayor, John Zimmerman, established authority through a police force known as the Regulators within Adidam. However, Zimmerman would foolishly hire mercenaries who would replace his Regulators and take on their title, while also taking power in the town and reducing John Zimmerman to little more than a figurehead mayor. This perhaps speaks to the naivety of the vault dwellers who emerged to create Adidam, thinking that they could just invite in these other people and allow them to be their police force. This is clearly a mentality of those who come from pre-war times and not those who have been out in the wasteland and are looking to take advantage of people. These regulators not only make the lives of the current residents of Adidam miserable by giving them strict work quotas and controlling the populace under a police state, they also go after a splinter group from the original vault dwellers from the LA vault that call themselves the Blades. The Blades live in a nightclub in downtown and now these new hired mercenary regulators go in there and capture them to become slaves and then bring them back to Adidam to work for them. As stated, the Blades live in a nightclub in downtown and they have been known to be in gang wars with groups like the Rippers. Luckily for the Blades, however, the Rippers were torn apart by a group of death claws that exist within the ruins. The leadership of Adidam has convinced their populace that the Blades are still a threat and killed the son of their figurehead mayor. In reality, they are just a weakened gang hiding out and regularly get captured and enslaved by these new mercenary regulators. Furthermore, it was the regulators that killed the mayor's son and then pinned it on the Blades to justify their harassment towards them. Outside of Adidam, we still have more locations in the massive boneyard remnants. This location is also the home of the Boneyard Library, where we originally meet the followers of the Apocalypse and where a young Edward Sallow would study before becoming the Caesar of his legion. The Gunrunners also established themselves in the LA Boneyard after making an opportunistic move from the hub, where they would eventually come upon a factory full of machinery that would lead to them becoming the Wasteland's premier weapon manufacturer. This location is called the Fortress, and it's a factory surrounded by a toxic waste moat. 
One of the most relevant locations to the original fallout lies above the demonstration vault and is known as the Cathedral. The Cathedral is home to a doomsday cult that worships someone known as the Dark God. The Dark God position is eventually usurped by the Master, who is formerly a vault dweller named Richard Gray. The Master, of course, controls the super mutant army from here. Under the Cathedral, in the very demonstration vault, the Boneyard survivors emerged from. The Cathedral, oddly enough, sits among the ruins of the Boneyard, with destroyed buildings and skyscrapers all around it while it remains untouched, a furthering sign to the Doomsday cultists that this is indeed the holy site they wish it to be. Unfortunately for them, the Vault Dweller, the player character from the original Fallout, would destroy the Demonstration Vault and the Cathedral when they defeated the Master and his army. Although we're not able to explore the Boneyard in any game after the original Fallout, it would go on to become a state within the New California Republic by 2189, and the town of Adidum would become reformed and renamed as New Adidum. The followers of the Apocalypse, who often operate within NCR territory, would establish a medical university, and the NCR would locate their Republic Reserve here as well. The Boneyard is still known to be an incredibly dangerous area, however, it is much more developed under control of the NCR and has seen a population growth as well. That was until the recent release of the Fallout television show, where its state seems to be within great question, as the Boneyard is explored in the television series, with the NCR's former capital being some form of Shady Sands getting destroyed. I say some form because if you watch the show, Shady Sands appears as a crater among the ruins of Los Angeles, however if you play the original Fallout you know that Shady Sands is not among the Boneyard really, but far out in the desert comprised of adobe buildings and adobe walls. Now, Shady Sands, just to do a quick little introduction to this, is the first town that you are generally are going to run into if you play the original Fallout, and it's very small. Now, of course, it goes on to become the capital of the NCR, so my only explanation for this is perhaps they moved this capital closer to the Boneyard to be closer to the other towns and resources in the area. Either that, or it's just an oversight or a different interpretation by the show's display. The show also introduces the area of the Boneyard known as Hollywood. Within the pre-war timeline of Hollywood in the Fallout series, it is very similar to the real-world counterpart. It is a hub for movies and culture, with the term Hollywood representing much more than just the neighborhood of Los Angeles. Within the show, we see Hollywood is undergoing a form of the Red Scare and McCarthyism, which is in reference to real-world occurrences centered around the fear-mongering of communism, where those targeted and called communists would be ostracized and lose their jobs. We also can make note of a heavy corporate influence in the area with the Hollywood sign advertising their sponsor, Nuka-Cola. In the aftermath of the Great War, Hollywood isn't much of a place people visit. It would become at least partially flooded and infested with gulpers, along with being home to the KPSS radio station owned by DJ Carl, where he seems to live alone in a bunker surrounded by traps. Los Angeles has never been visited within a first-person Fallout title, so our perspective on it is quite limited. The original top-down Fallout titles have excellent artwork style and atmosphere, but they provide a limited window into what the town might look like for a future title or television episode for that matter. Given the size and relevance of the city in not only the Fallout universe but the real world as well, I have to imagine that we will see the Boneyard once again in perhaps a future game. Over the course of the series, Fallout has changed a lot. The perspectives on areas and how the world works is going to change with time given that this series has been in the hands of many different developers and creators alike, different minds being put to the series. It's important to note that the original Fallout is quite different in practice than the more modern entries of the series. It's this top-down perspective, so you're getting a very different idea of what areas are like. And on top of that, in modern entries, we were given an open world and often a whole city to explore, so we see it in totality. In Fallout 1, that's not the case. You're given a large top-down map, and then within that map, there are isolated areas that you can explore individually. You can't just explore the whole world in this open sense. You're sort of just clicking around on the large map, and then eventually you stumble upon a green circle, and within that green circle, you can click on the location and enter those little different points of entry. You'll notice on this map for the original Fallout that the Boneyard is this large stretch of gray in the map, which indicates that this is a city, this area. It's not like other parts of the wasteland where it's, you know, a tan color, meaning you're in the desert. There's not much out there. You're going to have to find the different spread out locations. The Boneyard is this concentrated area 
of city, of course, because it is the sprawling metropolitan area of Los Angeles. I say this because we only have a couple points of entry within the original Fallout, so it's certainly possible that there is a ton of the city that you don't actually get to explore or see because of the limitations of the original game. I believe Fallout is at its best when it uses an area to its fullest extent and breathes some sort of new life into it rather than just using it as a shooting gallery for the player to add a bunch of weird creatures and raiders into it. Given the ending of the first season of the television series, we see that Los Angeles, or the Boneyard rather, has given long-term electricity power back into the city. I would love to see at least portions of the area be used in a way that New Reno is used in Fallout 2, or New Vegas is used in Fallout New Vegas, or Diamond City is used in Fallout 4. I know it's odd to ask for in a post-apocalyptic franchise, but the reality is this series is at its best when locations can be the home and the source of interesting scenarios, character-driven moments, when we have politics and factions at each other's throat. If an area is just destroyed, why would a faction care about it? There are no factions there, the area is destroyed. So when we can actually fill the area with life, there's valuable resources, that's when Fallout can display itself and really show its true colors. I understand, on the other hand, wanting to preserve how the original Fallout depicts the Boneyard, but ultimately Fallout is a series about the development of time, of how the world changes in the wake of a nuclear apocalypse. The world doesn't end in that instance, that's the whole point, it keeps going forward, and we get to see how it changes and the new flavor that's added to it with the given scenario. So that is the Boneyard, that is Los Angeles within the Fallout series. If you have anything that you want to add, anything that you think I missed, go ahead and drop it below. There's so much extensive lore in this universe, I can't pick up everything. And on the same note, I'm not trying to retell the story of the original Fallout game in this video. This is more just to give an overview on the city because, especially given it, it, it's such a central location to the Fallout show, and it could be relevant to the games going forward. On a side note, something I loved within Fallout New Vegas was that you can see at least one road sign pointing towards Los Angeles, and there's something about that that just connecting the world together in that way adds a sense of mystique, you know, an area that you hear about in a game but you can't go to is one of the most fascinating and enjoyable things within games for me. And given that New Vegas takes place so far in the future compared to the original Fallout where we actually get to visit the Boneyard, it just adds this extra layer of things like what's going on there now that so much time has passed. Anyways, that's it for me. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Back west, you don't see too many of these. Lakes, I mean. Natural or man-made. Any kind, really. We neglected the dams or pumped all the water out a long time ago. Owens, Isabella, the San Luis. Drained the aquifers of everything they had. Just a lot of mud and dust now. It's no secret we've had better campaigns. Holding this whole length of river isn't easy. We're stretched thin and the long 15 just keeps getting longer. Slow to get supplies, slower to get reinforcements. NCR Senate has got funds tied up at the Boneyard. And President Kimball ordered our most experienced rangers to chase ghosts down at Baja. Senate elections are coming up. Local representatives don't want to push any more funding to the Mojave campaign because it's unpopular. Most of the folks around the Boneyard haven't been to New Vegas and probably never will. All they know is that their money gets sucked away to this desert and their brothers, sisters, sons, and daughters die here. <laughs>